My name is James Franco, and I'm just an ordinary office worker. My life is pretty boring, just going back and forth between work and home every day with nothing special to talk about. When I first started working, I dreamed of climbing the corporate ladder, but I'm not good at making calculated moves because of my personality. I often end up with jobs that nobody else wants to do. My inability to say no is my own enemy. Even though I work hard, I'm still a regular employee with no title to my name. However, there was a time when I used to be a lot happier and smiled more. I married my girlfriend, whom I had been dating since the start of my working life. We had a happy marriage, which motivated me to do well at my job. But that happy life didn't last long. Are you telling me to live on this meager amount this month again? A few years into our marriage, my inability to succeed at work frustrated my wife, and she often showed her irritation. I'm sorry, I do my best, I would say. How many years and how many times have you repeated those words? I thought marrying you would mean a better life, but with this low salary, we can't do anything. I'm fed up. My wife Rachel has always loved spending money on herself, from beauty treatments and cosmetics to nails, hair salons and clothes. She was happiest when keeping herself beautiful. It seems she married me believing that life would be luxurious since I am a doctor's son. Indeed, my dad is a doctor and owns his own clinic. But my dad, who had a personality similar to mine, often saw his patients for almost charitable rates. He often provided care without profit for patients who were hesitant to seek treatment due to financial constraints. People can pay back when they recall it in the future as long as they are alive to do so. Money can't be made if you're not alive, my dad used to say. Because of this, despite being a doctor's family, we never lived a wealthy life. Of course, as a child, I never felt unhappy or questioned our way of living. I'm still proud of my dad to this day. However, Rachel decided to marry me because she thought being a doctor's son meant wealth without knowing the real story. So our life turned out very different from what she had planned. A few years later, Rachel said, I've had enough. If this is all we can do, there's no point in being with you. Let's get a divorce. A divorce? Hold on, please. I pleaded. How many years do you think I've waited? I age just as much as you do. I need to redo my life while I still can. I definitely don't want to be a low-income wife like you for the rest of my life. With those harsh words, Rachel left, leaving only the divorce papers behind. I was mad at myself for not realizing Rachel's true nature and for not being able to prove her wrong with my job performance. Six years have passed since then. I threw myself into work to heal the emotional wounds, but being not savvy, I still couldn't achieve outstanding performance at work, remaining a regular employee. If this continues, what Rachel said would turn out to be true. I feel utterly miserable. During that time, an envelope arrived in my mailbox. It was from Rachel. What does she want now? I wondered. Inside the letter from my ex-wife, who I hadn't heard from in a long time, was a wedding invitation. It seems Rachel is remarrying someone else. Why would my ex-wife send me an invitation? I thought. As I looked at the postcard, puzzled, I noticed a familiar chapel name written on it. This place, isn't it a super luxurious hotel? Knowing Rachel, she must have chosen a rich man to be her partner this time as well. I could easily guess that she intended to flaunt her happiness in a luxurious hotel wedding just to show the difference between her life now and the life she had with me. I don't owe her to attend. I mean, I was the one who got dumped, but maybe for Rachel too, me not succeeding in my job was an unexpected turn of events. After pondering for a while, I sighed deeply and stood up from my seat. This is the last time. I guess I'll just go. I knew attending the wedding would hurt my pride but I decided to go anyway. Despite everything, Rachel stayed with me for several years. I can somewhat understand her desire to show me that she's finally happy as a form of revenge. From an outsider's perspective, she might seem too kind-hearted. On the day of the wedding, the weather was perfect. I arrived a bit earlier than planned and, while sipping my coffee in the lounge, stared blankly out the window. It was her second wedding, so I recognized a few of Rachel's friends who I had met before. Unexpectedly, I overheard a conversation from the seat next to me. Rachel did an amazing job to get this wedding, didn't she? One person said. Yeah, it's in a luxury hotel this time. It's a level up from the first one, another replied. She used to complain that her first husband was a doctor's son, 
but when she found out he was just an ordinary office worker without money, it was really unexpected, wasn't it? Hearing them talk without realizing I was there, I felt a sharp pain in my heart. So Rachel never really liked me for who I was. I realized that when we got divorced, but hearing it from someone else made it even harder. Before she divorced her first husband, she had already set her sights on her current husband. They continued, really well done, Rachel. Well calculated. I couldn't believe my ears. So, Rachel was already in a relationship with her current partner before she even divorced me. My pride was shattered to pieces. She looked down on me so much, but she was the one cheating. I started to regret even being there. Trying to maintain my composure, I took another sip of my coffee, but my hand was shaking. Rachel appeared in front of me, all prepared to move to the bridal room. You really came. You're really a good person, right? She said, sneering at me. Trying to hold back my anger, I responded, Well, consider it my last duty. Glad you could find happiness. I forced a smile. Not liking my attitude, Rachel continued to belittle me. Isn't it wonderful? It's incomparable to the time with you. Here's a share of happiness for the poor bachelor. Be grateful, will you? She laughed sarcastically. Just then, a refreshing looking man spoke to her from behind. It was the groom, her new husband. Rachel, it seems like the relatives have gathered, let's hurry to the bridal room. Her husband Scott glanced at me briefly and gave a slight nod. I nodded back reflexively. Perhaps the groom didn't know Rachel had invited her ex-husband to the wedding. There's still some time before the ceremony, so please make yourself comfortable, Scott said with a pleasant smile as they were about to pass by me. At that moment an older man following the groom spoke to me. Excuse me for asking, but may I have your name? Dad, what's wrong? Scott asked. Ah, uh, nothing, just curious, the older man replied. Feeling uneasy under the groom's dad's serious gaze, I responded, my name is James Franco. Franco, is your father a doctor by any chance? The groom's dad suddenly seemed frantic. Staggering a bit under his intense presence, I nodded. Immediately, the color drained from his face, and he raised his voice. Scott, the wedding is off right now. What? What are you talking about, Dad? Scott exclaimed. Caught off guard by this unexpected turn of events, I hurriedly stood up from my seat. No, I didn't do anything, I said, still in a state of panic. The groom's dad began to prostrate himself at my feet. People around the venue started to murmur and stir. Dad, what are you doing? No, really, what? Scott urged his dad to lift his head, but he stayed bowed down, pressing his forehead to the floor. I was completely lost and had no idea what was going on. Rachel, caught in this embarrassing situation, turned red with anger and started to lash out. Can we just talk about this? Lift your head, please, I said, trying to calm the situation. I persuaded the groom's dad to lift his head, and he began to plead for forgiveness, tears in his eyes. I'm begging for your forgiveness. I've been unfaithful to Dr. Franco, he said. It seemed that the groom's dad, Gary, had some past connection with my dad. To understand the truth, I listened intently to Gary's words as he began to speak hesitantly. Gary was a fellow doctor like my dad. The story dates back to my early childhood when Gary was still a trainee doctor at the hospital where my dad had just started his own medical practice. My dad was known for his skills at a well-known university hospital. Gary, who was a student at the Associated Medical School, looked up to him. He volunteered to train at my dad's hospital and learn various techniques. One day, Gary's wife gave birth, but the baby was found to have a serious heart defect. The heart surgery needed was risky, and the chances of survival were slim, which made the other doctors hesitant to perform the operation. Desperate, Gary consulted my dad. My dad agreed to help and successfully performed the heart surgery, saving the baby's life. However, the medical expenses for the baby's condition were very high. Gary, being a trainee doctor at the time, couldn't afford to pay it all at once. With tears streaming down his face, he bowed deeply and asked my dad if he could repay the amount in installments. My dad just laughed and shook his head. Someday, when you become a great doctor and have the time to remember me, come back and repay me then. I guarantee you'll definitely become a great doctor, he said, to keep Gary from feeling too pressured. Sometime after, Gary was sent abroad to study medicine and didn't return to the States for several years. 
Despite this, he never forgot his promise to my dad and continued to save money for the repayment. However, by the time he came back to the States, my dad's hospital was no longer there. The contact information had changed and they had lost touch. Not being able to repay the money had always weighed heavily on his heart and he had lived all those years without being able to do anything about it. Today, he happened to see me at the hotel and was shocked. He said I looked just like my dad used to. I'm truly sorry. Please, I'm begging you, let me meet your dad in person and apologize to him, he said, feeling Gary's intense emotions. I responded calmly, that sounds just like my dad, but he passed away five years ago from cancer. Hearing the news, Gary stood there in a daze. No way, he whispered, shocked. Yes, I said softly, he passed away just like that. Until then, he had been moving from one clinic to another. He was a wonderful doctor, always considering his patients until the very end. Kneeling on the floor, Gary broke down in tears. Dad, this isn't the place, Scott said, trying to calm his father. That scar on your chest, that's proof that Dr. Franco saved your life. Scott seemed to lose his words. He looked at me, then back at his father, confused and emotional. You're able to have a wedding ceremony and be here today all thanks to Dr. Franco, Gary said, his voice shaking. He bowed to me again. I want to repay all the kindness I couldn't repay to your dad. Please, let me do something. I quickly lifted Gary's face and extended my hand to help him stand up. Mr. Gary, I'm really happy. Just remembering my dad is enough for me. The life my dad saved is now able to celebrate such a wonderful day like today. Being able to see the proof of my dad's existence makes me happy. I'm sure my dad would be happy too. Hearing my words, Gary started crying out loud again. The onlookers began to cheer and applaud, moved by the emotional scene. Rachel was the only one glaring at me with a look of fury. As the time for the ceremony drew near, I stood to the side, watching the event unfold. I couldn't help but reflect on the day's surprising turn of events. Scott and Rachel continued with their preparations, but there was a noticeable tension in the air. Gary stayed close to me, his eyes red from crying. I'm so sorry for everything. Your dad was a great man, and I failed him by not finding him sooner, he said, his voice still shaking. Mr. Gary, I said, placing a hand on his shoulder, you didn't fail him. My dad helped you because he believed in kindness and compassion. He wouldn't want you to feel this way. Just knowing that you remember him and are grateful is enough. Gary nodded, trying to compose himself. Your dad's legacy lives on in you, he said, attempting a smile. He would be proud. The ceremony began and I found a quiet corner to observe from. Rachel and Scott exchanged their vows, but I couldn't shake the feeling of disconnection from the event. My mind was flooded with memories of my dad, his dedication, and the values he instilled in me. As the ceremony concluded, guests mingled and congratulated the newlyweds. Gary approached me once more. James, if there's anything I can ever do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Your father saved my son, and I owe him everything. I smiled warmly. Thank you, Mr. Gary. Just keep living with the same kindness my dad showed you. That's the best way to honor him. Rachel approached, her expression still cold. Enjoying the show, she asked sarcastically. I took a deep breath. Rachel, I didn't come here to cause trouble. I came to pay my respects and to wish you well. She scoffed. Well, mission accomplished. Now you can leave. I nodded, understanding her anger but feeling no need to respond further. As I turned to go, Scott stepped forward, extending his hand. Thank you for coming, James. It means a lot. I shook his hand. I wish you both the best. Take care of each other. Walking away from the venue, I felt a mix of emotions. The day had brought closure to some old wounds and opened my eyes to the enduring impact of my dad's kindness. It wasn't the outcome I expected, but it was a powerful reminder of the values that truly matter. I had an unexpected experience that changed my wounded heart into feelings of pride and happiness. Afterwards, Gary insisted on repaying the medical expenses and the kindness my dad had shown. He gave me a substantial amount of money that he had saved for my dad. Additionally, Gary's hospital started doing business with my company. This significantly boosted my performance at work, and I finally got promoted. The kindness and compassion my dad had shown came back to me in a wonderful way. 
I cherish this happiness while remembering the serious look in my dad's eyes when he was working. My dad's dedication to helping others had a lasting impact on me and on those he helped. His legacy was not only in the lives he saved but also in the values he instilled in me. As for Rachel, her second marriage didn't turn out as she had hoped. Her husband eventually found out that she had dated me before our divorce and that her motivations for both her previous and current marriages were driven by money. Over time, he grew tired of her behavior, and this led to another divorce. I heard about it through the grapevine. It was a reminder that what goes around comes around. Living by my dad's example, I believe that even if something doesn't benefit me directly, it can still bring happiness to someone else. This belief guides my actions every day. Today, I saw someone smile, and just knowing I contributed to that happiness reassures me that my life is heading in the right direction. Reflecting on these events, I realized how much my dad's principles had influenced my life. His approach to helping others without expecting anything in return had come full circle. The money Gary gave me was a tangible reminder of my dad's generosity, but even more valuable was the recognition and respect his actions had earned. At work, my newfound success wasn't just about the promotion. It was about knowing that my dad's legacy had indirectly contributed to my achievements. Gary's hospital partnering with my company was more than a business deal. It was a testament to the long-lasting effects of kindness and integrity. Rachel's situation served as a contrasting lesson. Her focus on material gain led to temporary happiness, but ultimately resulted in loneliness and loss. It was a stark reminder that true happiness and fulfillment come from genuine connections and helping others, not from selfish pursuits. Every day, I strive to live by the values my dad taught me. I take pride in helping others, knowing that even small acts of kindness can have a profound impact. Seeing the smiles of those I help is more rewarding than any material gain. It reassures me that I am on the right path, one that my dad would be proud of. My journey from a wounded heart to a place of pride and happiness has been shaped by the lessons my dad imparted. His life was a beacon of compassion and selflessness and I aim to follow in his footsteps. The unexpected twists and turns have only reinforced my belief in the power of kindness. As I move forward, I carry with me the memories of my dad's dedication and the impact he had on others. His legacy lives on not just in me but in everyone who experienced his kindness. Each day is an opportunity to honor his memory by continuing to spread happiness and support to those around me. In conclusion, the experience with Gary and the changes in my life have shown me the importance of living with integrity and compassion. My dad's influence continues to guide me and I am committed to making a positive difference in the world, one act of kindness at a time.